All right, so now I'm going to cover histograms. Now, histograms, I showed you in Photoshop how to maintain histograms so it doesn't leave a trace that you actually edited the photo. That was one of my previous lessons. But now, I kind of want to go over histograms and how they work. Here is Adobe Lightroom 2. This is probably the most amazing software on the face of this planet. Okay, so let's go into Photoshop and adjust my histogram on this picture. Let's go in here. And in here, I want to discard, don't manage any color, and I have my histogram. So right now, this histogram is telling me that I hit dead on in my black. Look at that. It's dead on. My white value, however, needs a little bit of adjustment. Okay, that wouldn't tell, I wouldn't have guessed that by the picture, however, because I could still see a lot of shadow detail in here. See, I can almost see this crevice in the wood go right up into the wing area. So, that's telling me, you know, I could go in here and I could probably do a curves and see where this area starts here. Well, I'm just going to ease into that area just a little bit. So, I'm going to put a dot right about there and just ease into the area. Okay. And again, that's looking a little blown out but I could start seeing some detail in the wood region here so I'm gonna hit OK and I'm gonna update my histogram and I'm gonna get these really bad vibes in my histogram these are really bad I get spikes and what will happen is some pixels are just blown out you know it looks good as a picture uh, it'll print good but let me show you something let's go into Lightroom and take this picture and you can see a different thing this color is way different here in Lightroom okay so what I want to do here since I have Lightroom and I just opened this up in Lightroom I have a develop area so in develop I can choose temperature look what happened to my histogram okay nothing okay so in my exposure ratio you know, maybe I want to expose this just a little bit more. My black ratio, I'm going to expose it just a little bit more. And look what I'm doing. I'm pushing my whites over to my histogram. Okay. And now maybe I can darken my blacks just a little bit. But I don't want to clip them. See what happens when I clip them? This is going to tell me where I'm clipping at. If I click here and nothing shows up here, It'll usually be blue, but I don't see any blue images. I mean, I'm dead on right there. So I'm just going to adjust my exposure ratio just a little bit. I'm not going to full blow it out. I want to keep just a little bit of there. And let's see, I'm going to up my recovery just a little bit. And see, my recovery just compensates for the two things that I've done. So I've exchanged the exposure ratio and rich into blacks up a little bit but see it moved the histogram over some it's alright the picture's starting to look good um, if I wanted some more yellow in there I could saturate it and I could start pulling out those that moss in the wood and I could start pulling out the yellows in the moth when I'm done um, I can just export this and choose maybe my desktop I'm going to choose quality. I'm not going to choose JPEG format because it's horrid. I'm going to choose PSD. And I'm going to keep with the Adobe 1998. I really like the Photo Pro myself, but oh well. I'm just going to export it as that. So this is the one I had here in Photoshop adjusting. And here's the one in Lightroom that I adjusted. Okay, let me see where that exported to. Seventh layer of hell, probably. Export. Uh, specific folder. Put in subfolder. Export untitled. Okay. Huh? Yes. Now, I'm not going to manage any of the color. That way, it keeps it true. And there we go. So, that is the, the advantages of using that. Adobe Lightroom. Look at the histogram. 
If I click on it, I get no kind of change within it. I get no weird spikes. In Photoshop, of course, I get all the weird spikes. And the color adjustment's a little harder here, where this is a little bit easier. Okay, one last option before I let you go. The third option, if you don't or can't afford Lightroom because you just spent God only knows how much money on Photoshop, your other option is the ability to go into my computer and go to your, and I'm just going to go page out and get that same picture. and I'm going to open it in raw camera. Okay, does this look familiar to you? It should because it kind of is Lightroom, but it's a little harder. Okay, so it's not so user friendly. But here's my exposure ratio. Okay. Here's my blacks. If I click over here, I have my hue saturation. Look, I can pick not only what I'm going to saturate, but I could choose what color too. So the other one was just saturation across the board. This one I could just saturate the yellows if I wanted to. Bring those out. Whoops, that's hues, sorry. And let's go to saturation yellows. I'm going to bring some of those yellows out. And maybe some of the greens in there for the wood. And some of the luminance values of the green and some of the luminance values of the yellow. Okay, go back. Here's my temperature setting. So I can set that temperature setting just like I can in Lightroom. So my fill light. So you get the idea. You know, you can spend a, I think it was 199 for Lightroom, or you could just go into Camera Raw, and it'll work that way too. Now this is a JPEG. See, this is a JPEG image. This is not a raw format from your camera. So it can be done on JPEGs too. Histogram maintains true. Looks good. When I say open image, and update. There it is. Virgin histogram. All right, so that is histograms in a nutshell, and how you to get away with um, maintaining good histograms and good color within your photo within your photos. I still like Adobe Lightroom as far as for color, but if you can't afford it, um, play around with the sliders there in Camera Raw, and it'll work every time.